So you guys, we've been on quite a journey today, the ups and the downs of this. And um, I just always want you to know what an amazing community that we are in. And we have some amazing leaders that are helping us to stay healthy, both um, physically and economically. Steve, talk to us a little bit about um, the Build Beyond game plan and what you're thinking at this point. I'll share with you a little bit of a framework um, uh, of how we view um, economic uh, recovery kind of going forward. Somebody said, I hope we're in the fourth quarter. I kind of think we're starting the third quarter. You know, we just had a halftime and maybe this is our halftime kind of pep talk and strategy. And now we got to lean into the third quarter and fourth quarter because there's still work our community needs to do both locally and regionally. Melanie, I'm going to have you share maybe just a few slides and I will, I will, I promise you I'll go through these very, very quickly. What I'm going to show you with this slide, if we're able to pull that up, is just the three stages of our recovery plan, which include the initial coordination and response. Um, and then, uh, and that's kind of the work that we're still doing today, right? Um, that's just pulling the team together. And we've had a team of people, 40, 50 of us have gotten together every week since the uh, end of March and meeting on a weekly basis, communicating together, talking together, trying to make sure we're filling gaps, supporting business needs, uh, reaching out to our healthcare partners, establishing and building those relationships toward a, toward a particular goal. Stage two of our recovery plan is business recovery and stabilization. And every business in our community is in a little different part of this stage. Some are still trying to respond and react. Uh, some have actually gained some traction in economic recovery. Some, as you've heard, are, are blowing the numbers out of the water from last year but some are having a tough time. Some are 50% below where they were last year and they're very nervous about um, what that next quarter is gonna look like, that Q1 of 2021. And so this whole work uh, around business recovery and stabilization, that pace of that looks so much different depending upon what business that, that you're involved in. And what we're trying to do mostly in that stage too is have businesses learn from businesses about what it takes to react and pivot and try and find a, a new kind of a new path forward and gain some traction. I want to spend a, just a second though uh, talking to you about stage three and given the time that we're in now what I'm going to ha have you do when you have a chance if you haven't seen this yet go to the website um, uh, yceconomicrecovery.org you will see this whole recovery plan laid out and you'll get details about each one of these three stages. Stage three is about positioning ourselves for the future. Uh, as you've heard the term resiliency and flexibility and, and pivoting all that today, that's really what stage three is about, is positioning our community for the future. We have some basic objectives that we're trying to accomplish in that stage three. You'll see them listed there in that plan. We're gonna talk about uh, cultivating new startups and supporting our local businesses and building resiliency by leaning into our strengths as a community and as an economy, like our healthcare system and the opportunity that ha has for us as well. You'll learn a little bit about what we mean by saying, capture our small metro advantages. You heard Jason talk about, we're not an intimidating community, that's attractive to people. And so there's a whole list of objectives there in that stage three document that you can get on our website and learn a little bit more about. What I wanna leave you with today is what I call essentials for today and tomorrow. And Melanie, if you wanna just go to the next slide, I will give you what I call four essentials that we can all be doing for today and tomorrow. Uh, these are images of local businesses in our community. I'll let you guess which ones they are. If you love a cinnamon roll, you'll know the lower right-hand corner is Stella's. If you love something a little different, uh, uh, maybe Sassy Biscuit, Waffles there, uh, and then Base Camp, all those companies that, that you can reflect on. The one in the top corner is Joy of Living, and we have lost our Joy of Living retail outlet in downtown, just in downtown, and that was a difficult thing for the health of our downtown. So the first essential for today and tomorrow, you've heard it, is please lean in to our local business community before you easily click sitting there and, and buying something off the internet, having it delivered, see if there's a local source for that or put your mask on, walk out the front door, 
walk to that local retailer. They're all protecting both their staff and their customers. That is an absolute essential for today and tomorrow that we can be leaning into. I, I'm gonna encourage the community to think long-term and create more opportunities. But today where the rubber meets the road, it's about leaning into our, our current businesses. This, the second thing I'm gonna ask us to do that I think is essential is to stay healthy. Uh, stay healthy individually, uh, do what you can to get out and exercise and be a part of that. Where you do all those things that we heard, our healthcare providers um, and our scientists and uh, the epidemiologists and our other doctors and professionals that were part of our dialogue today, all encouragement about the protocols and practices to be healthy. My point with encouraging you to individually be healthy and, and adopt those practices as an individual focus is that it impacts the person next to you, it impacts your coworker, it impacts your neighbor. So actually those first two imperatives about shopping locally and staying healthy, that's just about being a good neighbor and doing the, doing the right thing to take care of yourself and then that has an impact on, on the person next to you. So those are the first two imperatives. Shop local, take care of our local business, and then stay healthy. The third imperative, the thing that we can do today and tomorrow is to maintain our business healthcare partnership. I can't say how much I appreciate John Felton and his team, um, our, our healthcare community, and their willingness to spend time communicating with and dialoguing with the business community. It has been tremendous. I think we're frankly a national model in how these two voices come together around the same table and try and stay in step with one another as the community moves through this. So that's, a, that's an important essential for today and tomorrow. Let's stay committed, regardless of what the journey looks like over the next couple of months to this partnership that we've established uh, between business uh, and healthcare. Um, my fourth one for you, my fourth encouragement um, is to, we do need to have a build beyond kind of mindset. Uh, we need a clear picture of what that means and looks like. And so what I'm showing you on the screen now are actually master plan drawings, things that are on the drawing board in our community that would add assets and amenities to the, what we look like as a community going forward. And they're in various stages of planning and investment and development. Uh, but it gives you a glimpse of how, as a community, we've been, we've been talking out loud together about amenities and things we need to invest in. And beyond these amenities, basic infrastructure, parking downtown, other things that are essential to attract talent, new private investment. Um, having that build beyond mindset is taking hold of these visions we've created and turning them into reality, executing on what that looks like. And we're doing that because we still have work to do economically. I can tell you, I had a board meeting this morning, 33 board mem members, we had a round table discussion. Almost every single business leader at our board meeting this morning said, workforce remains a challenge. It was a challenge pre-pandemic. It's still a challenge now with, with more dynamic nature to it, more uncertainty to it, it still remains a challenge. So our ability as a community to come together continue to be thoughtful about investing in ourselves, visioning about what we look like uh, as a community going forward, will strongly position us to attract and retain our talent, and then also to compete for new private investment on a regional basis. And the last slide I wanna show you is um, uh, having a build beyond mindset means you we say yes to incremental opportunities. We're not gonna be able to do all the things I showed you on that slide, or all the things we aspire to do overnight. We wanna take it one step at a time, seize those opportunities that are in front of us. The picture you have right here with the big sign build on it is a group of community leaders, volunteers that came together and for years have been working on promoting the development of the Skyline Trail. Earlier this year, we got word from the federal government uh, that we were able to secure a grant that will support the development of the inner belt loop and the skyline trail. So thinking incrementally, staying committed to those opportunities gives us this kind of success as a community to be able to actually put a shovel in the ground, build something that we've been dreaming about for a number of years and start making those 
uh, incremental steps. So my, my encouragement is to have that build beyond mindset as we work through the third quarter, fourth quarter, whatever quarter we're in, we still have to be thinking about what we wanna look like and be and act and what our economy needs to look like and how to get there as we move through this together. So Karen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop at that and, and just say thank you from, from me to everybody that participated today, all the expertise that was brought to bear, those of you who devoted two plus hours of your day to just listen and, and participate that way. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the partnerships that we've had around the economic response recovery team, the chamber and downtown and other key partnerships, the city, the county, it's really made a big difference. A lot of private sector partners and their dedication, I can't tell you how much it's appreciated and frankly still needed as we move forward. So thank you.